Fathers love all and welcome. Today we're going to read 2 John, followed up with the commentary by F.B. Meyer. So sit back, relax, let's see what we can learn today. 2 John The elder, under the elect lady, and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy, and peace, from God the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is the love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment, that, as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. For many deceivers are entered into the world, who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver, and an antichrist. Look to yourselves, that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth, and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you, and speak face to face, that our joy may be full. The children of thy elect sister greet thee, Amen. And now the commentary by F. B. Meyer. Second John, walking in truth. This exquisite letter, a model of old world correspondence, was probably written when the apostle was the guest of the nephews of the lady addressed. The epistle revolves around the two words, love and truth, which were the poles of his life. When Christ is in us, not only are we true in judgment and speech, but we recognize truth wherever it is to be found. No horizon bounds the vision of the true and truth-loving soul. Be true and loving, and you will have a rich heritage of grace, mercy, and peace. Love is best shown by obedience. Second John 1.8 shows a pastor's anxiety, and it reads, Look to yourselves, that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Don't go on without Christ, or you will lose God, as we read in Second John 1.9, which reads, Whosoever transgresseth, and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. Remember that love can be stern, as we read in Second John 10. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. The letter reveals the strength, purity, and love of the primitive church. Let us put into our letters thoughts which will make them worth receiving and keeping. I hope that truly blesses each and every one of you listen to it. Let's do a little review. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, John starts out in the second verse, 
says, For the true sakes which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. You know, as we've read John and first, second, now second John, and his main message, and I think the main message of Jesus, is truth and love. We should always be loving towards one another, and we should always be seeking truth, which we'll find in the Spirit. He goes on to tell us, once again to remind us, we love one another. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. So he reminds us to love one another, as Jesus commanded. And to show our love by walking after his commandments. And then he warns us that many deceivers are entered into the world, even back then, and even more so now, I'm afraid, who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. You know, I hear a lot of people that get upset because I call the Father, Father. Because they say that the Creator doesn't have a gender. And I understand what they're saying. But His Son, Jesus Christ, who came in the flesh, told me to call Him Father. Told us all to call Him Father. So if you're going to deny that he's our father, then I guess you're denying Jesus Christ who came in the flesh as being his son. And I tell you straight out, you're a deceiver and an antichrist. And I want nothing to do with you. I hope you find the truth and come to know the father and his son before it's too late. Because to deny the Son is to deny the Father. And to deny the Father is to deny the Son. And then he tells us in verse 9 and 10, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. So if you're not listening to the doctrine of Christ who told us to honor the Father above all others and love our neighbors as ourselves then you're not you don't have God. And it says if any come unto you and bring not this doctrine in other words if you're coming to me and tell me not to call the Father, Father, as Jesus told me to call the Father, Father, then that's a different doctrine. And I cannot receive you into my house. And I will not bid you Godspeed. Because I am warned that if I bid you Godspeed, I'm just as bad as you are. I'm a partaker of your evil deeds. And I want nothing to do with denying the Father as the creator of all and his son Jesus Christ so I know it's hard for some to understand the difference between loving your neighbor and being a partaker of their evil deeds I love you and hope that you come to understand the truth but I cannot let you into my house and I cannot bid you Godspeed in what you're doing because I cannot be a partaker of your evilness 
repent from it. Give up the goddess worship and come to know the Father. He loves you. Come to know His Son. Let His Spirit fill you and lead you into all truths. I pray for you as I pray for everybody that's lost in the darkness to come to the light. Let's not argue about the gender of the Creator and let's just listen to Jesus and get to know Him as our loving Father because that's what He is. I ask that you continue to pray for the children our fellow brothers and sisters around the world. And don't forget to pray for those stumbling in the darkness that they too can find the light and get to know the love of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Don't forget to thank Him every day for just being Him. And don't forget to take some time get by yourself and talk to him. It truly will change your life. I'll catch you next time.